Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being a show where we talk about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Bull. Very interesting episode. I like, because I was like wondering, like, okay, so like, where is this going, especially with like the opening and everything, and it's like, okay, because it's almost like misdirection. It's also interesting, because like some of the code opens to Bull, you're like, huh, that feels like, that, that was, because you always want to wonder, like, okay, so how is this going to connect the bull? Because for some reason, in the back of my head, I'm always like, am I watching a different show? Because it, 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 just the way it sets itself up. Because it's just always interesting because you kind of get to see the crime in some cases. Not every case, but you kind of get to see, like, the crime that's committed and even who did it. I mean, especially because in this, inter in this instance, it's almost like who did it wasn't necessarily important. Because this all revolves around Julia Michaels. She's a, a medical examiner. She's actually kind of the chief medical examiner now. But like, it's like the time frame of like, oh yeah, six years ago, there's a serial killer, uh, like the bathroom stall butcher. And then like, well, he's not just a serial killer. He does other terrible shit too. But uh, he hadn't been caught. There was no evidence left behind. But Julia found a pubic hair that ended up getting him and then like oh yeah like it, oh, three months later and then we skip to present day and then it's kind of like oh yeah julia is being arrested because now like you know another uh independent party examined uh, uh hair and it's like nope doesn't match other people checked it nope doesn't match so julia is being kind of you know potentially tried for falsifying evidence and stuff like that and so Bull initially, you know, because obviously this is something Benny, Benny initially wanted to take this case because we never actually found out why he, how he knows Julia. I mean, I guess as an eight, like, you know, formerly working with the DA's office, you know, back in his, you know, like, prior to tact days, you know, uh, maybe that's how him and Julia know each other. Because there was never any moment in the episode where we kind of really got to know about that. I guess it's just, you know, one of many, of uh, Benny's many different associates he's gained over his career and stuff like that. But nevertheless, um, it was interesting bull and her talking her and benny and bull talking and bull's kind of like because she's like i don't have the money to pay for like you know high power people like you and bull's like i don't worry about it but she's like but i'm not going to pay for you to half-ass it either and it's like yo she was very blunt and just kind of matter of fact about it of just being like essentially being like you better give this your all the fact of the matter is you better because bull's like okay this is all about you know because she doesn't want this to be like oh i want you just doing this case just for the attention and the limelight and he's like well the fact of the matter is that attention will all be about the fact is that you are acquitted and he's like so you remember that she's like you better remember that it's like yo and even bull and benny even trying to be like oh let's switch the narrative to be like maybe you made a mistake a mistake isn't criminal but the fact is julia was like no I'm, I didn't make a mistake. I never made a mistake. So let's not even go down that route. I'm not even going to entertain that idea. It's like, wow, she is very stubborn. She's one of those clients that's probably like, because like they've had one kind of like that before. It was um, back in season one, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, uh, Marissa's ex. Uh, God, if I had to, what was he played Cade in? Um, on blind spot like that actor he you've definitely seen him pop up and stuff he was in the following uh but he was kind of like not like he's a, wasn't he like a surgeon or something like that but it's the fact that you're very stubborn you're kind of about your ways and stuff like that so she's kind of hard to kind of really tailor like like it was interesting kind of seeing how they were going to tailor her defense and they went about it being like basically Rather than looking at this as someone who did something malicious, rather think of it as like this is someone, this isn't some grand conspiracy. Someone somewhere along the way made a stupid mistake, and here we are now. And that was kind of what they were aiming for. So that was kind of interesting. And because the fact of the matter is, Julia is very matter of the fact. Even Chunk trying to break her down in the whole defense of everything, being like, it's like this, 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 and that. And she's like, okay, uh huh, uh huh. And the fact of the matter is, you know, he was like, okay, so. You might want to change your answer because for her, it's like, I don't work with, with people. The reason why I work so late and kind of don't let other people be a part of my process is because people are just going to get away. I kind of don't like people. But Chunk's like, okay, you might want to change it up because you want this jury to kind of look a little more sympathetic to you. They'll like you if they think you like them. But she's like, I don't know them. And, you know, Chunk tried to say the same thing to her. It's like, they don't know you, so they can't understand. Because at no point did Chunk think, like, oh, you plan to mess with the evidence or anything. It's like, no, the fact of the matter is I believe you is just like... You've got to make them believe you. But for her, it's like, he's even trying to shift the narrative, like I said, shift the narrative to be like, oh, you know, maybe it's just for you. You're so concerned about 
getting justice for those families that are crying, you know, and worried about like, oh, what happened to the person I cared about? But then she was kind of like, no, I'm not going to do that either because for her, it's like, she's a scientist. It all comes down to fact. There is one truth, you know, and it's like any other, anything else doesn't matter in this particular case in that regard. And Chunk is just trying his best because he's like, if you don't do this, like, you know, things won't look good for you. So Chunk was very hesitant to have her understand, but those very reasons of her being so matter of fact of like, there is one truth is what made Bull put her on the sand too. I mean, she even ended up, I even love like they're looking through the evidence and stuff like that. And Benny and Bull just kind of like, and she's like, all right, give me, give me the evidence. I'll look over everything. I mean, not the evidence, but like the files and stuff like that. And they're like, are you sure? And she's like, Yes, you don't even have to be here. They're like, okay, we're gonna go do this and kind of show you how much of a control freak she is about everything. Because it turns out every avenue of this aspect she handles herself is actually kind of interesting. Because like her former supervisor, Dr. Hansen, was on the stand and everything, and then Benny kind of switched the script on, like flipped the script on. Because even he was talking like, all oh, the fact of the matter is, I was proud of our unit. And it's like, oh, you seem like you got a problem with her. It's like, yes, because she's kind of arrogant. She's kind of hard on people. But then Benny, like, switched that to be like, can we really listen to this guy? He has a personal vendetta against my client. So his opinion is very biased because the fact of the matter is not only was he her supervisor, he then eventually ended up having to work for her because she became his boss and even eventually fired him. And even the thing is like, for one, it's like he didn't like the way she went about cases. Like she kind of got like, didn't like, she went forward even when like, you know, the evidence necessarily didn't reflect what she, you know, kind of thought it would or whatever. And he, this and that. And, but Benny was like, yeah, but that is your opinion about the person who became your supervisor and then fired you. And he was like, yes, that is my opinion. So there's that. Um, it also turns out that the hair was messed with because there was pollen on it and Julia was like, Emily, the, the particular victim, and one of the particular victims, the one that the evidence was found on and everything, it's like, she was killed in winter, there was no pollen around, so someone replaced the hair, and so I was like, oh, okay, so playing into that whole uh, conspiracy aspect and stuff like that, but I like the way Julia kind of broke it down and explained everything, too, for her, it was like, the fact of the matter is, like, for me, I don't want no hints. Like, if people want to say, like, I might have planted evidence and stuff like that. It's like, I don't get along well with people, but I'm able to do my job because I'm great at it. I can do it by myself. That way, I don't have to worry about hurting someone's feelings when I chew them out for making a mistake. Or, you know, I don't have to, you know, it's like I get, I get to stay in my zone and do the best work I can. It's like, I'm not going to do something as simple as, like, you know, tampering with evidence. Something as stupid as that, actually, because it's like, it does nothing for me. It's like, at the end of the day, I don't even care about, uh, Malford, whether it's him or not, I never have. At the end of the day, what I care about is the truth. The evidence and the truth said that it was him, and that's all that matters for her. It's a puzzle, and she loves a puzzle. She made a good, I like the comparison to like the crossword puzzle because it's a simple comparison that even I could be like, yeah, I get what you mean. And the fact of the matter is, it gives you a hint. It's like there's no satisfaction when the hint is there, whether it gives you the entire word or a letter. It's just kind of like, oh, I didn't fully solve it by myself. Oh man, that sucks, you know. And for her, it's like, this is her puzzle. Why would she jeopardize it? Because, like, that truth, that finding out the truth is kind of, it's kind of me putting in a, almost a negative spin in it, but that's her high. At the very least, that's, she has that integri integrity when it comes to her work, that that's all she aims for. The truth is all that matters, nothing else. You know, which in, in turn makes her very blunt, like, as we've kind of uh, seen over the course of the episode and everything. But I did like the narrative that they started switching. Like, okay, there's plenty of fangirls about this whole situation. You know, Taylor and Danny were looking into it. And so maybe they were responsible. They actually went to go see Malford himself. And he, like, Bull kind of walked away from it being like, yeah, let's just drop them. And he's like, why? It's like, literally, the dude could care less about getting out. He didn't even seem that interested in his appeal and everything like that. He looked smug and stuff like that, but it just, it seemed like he didn't care. He wasn't even interested in Julia's trial because if things went bad with Julia's trial, that means you would get released, but it didn't seem like he was that concerned about it. So it's like, obviously, he had nothing to do with this, but then Bull suggested maybe Ryan. Because effective matters, I, I, I should have, it would have been interesting if I had noticed it. I had never noticed that until Boy had pointed out. I wonder if you go back through the episode and you actually look, you get to see his lawyer Ryan probably there the entire time. I just never noticed it. Also, side note, that actor pops up in so much stuff. The actor who played Ryan. I feel like I've seen him in something fairly recently, but I can't remember what. I'm trying to remember what the last thing I'm, 
clearly remember seeing him in. I want to say it was Preacher Season 2. He played Victor. I think that's like the most recent thing that's coming to mind, but I know he's definitely popped up in other stuff, too. Like, he's just one of those actors, like, I've seen you in a thousand different things, dude. I just, I, I always feel shitty, because it's like, yeah, you've got such a familiar face, but I never, like, know actors' names, and I, regarding it, it kind of bugs me, but nevertheless. But then it turns out, like, oh, yeah, like, Skylar, that tech assistant, was the one who got paid off by Ryan to cover it up, like, create this false evidence and stuff like that. And it's like, why? At the end of the day, it's like, why? I don't get it. Like, because even Bull kind of tried to rationalize and everything, because he's like, the fact of the matter is you're going to be letting out not just one criminal, like this terrible human being that you're defending. Sure, like, obviously that's the thing, you know. Obviously you can pick and choose your clients and stuff like that. But it's like, yeah, there's that one thing. You're just doing your job. But it's like, why go through such so much for this one particular person because if it comes out you're you're ruining your entire career your legacy and it's like but what for what would be the reason that you would do that not just him you'd basically open the floodgates for every other case and so even in the back of my mind it's like it had to be personal for him and it turns out it is because it turns out his brother uh, murdered someone and the evidence to that trial and everything was connected to Julia because she was one of the people that looked over the evidence. So it, that's what this all comes down to. It's like, well, who do you go? Who do you go above and beyond for? Like, who do you go out of your way to protect? And that's family. So in this case, it turns out that's what this was all about. This was about helping his brother and everything. So, but I like when it is all said and done. Um, bull, you know, when they do win it and everything, and like the ADA. Um, ended up dropping, or the DA, whatever the case may be, I uh, ended up dropping the charges, like, Bull kind of comes over and hugs Julia, and she's almost like, oh, whoa, you know, and I did like that moment at the end, because it's very reflective, because at the end, she's back it, at work at the morgue, and she kind of gets happy, because she even talked about that earlier in the episode, like, she was standing there, and Benny's like, it's on the drone, she's like, I don't know what to do with myself, the fact didn't matter is, I, my first instinct was to kind of go to work, go to the morgue, but I can't do that right now, so it's like, kind of shows you how important her job is to her, you know, so. Even had that whole thing with Bull and um, uh, Diana, I thought was kind of sweet, where it's kind of like them texting and stuff like that. It's like, you know where to find me, and the fact of the matter is, um, he's talking about like, oh, that person at the door, that's me. And it's like, oh, like them flirting and stuff like that. And then like, um, that look on Bull's face, I think that's just him. I think realizing things between him and Diana are getting just that much more serious potentially. So, I don't know. I just thought that was kind of an interesting little tag at the end. Um, overall, like, a very interesting episode. I just like how everything kind of... It's always interesting when, like, slightly difficult clients... It's not like... Well, there's also that aspect I forgot to talk about, too, that was kind of interesting. The whole aspect of, like, she deleted her first report and only kept her second report... Like, even though she found nothing in the first report, it's like, you still shouldn't do that. Part of me was like, is that just her being a perfectionist trying to be like, no, 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 I found it all in the first. And it's like, no, she wasn't, she's not like, you know, so narcissistic like that. For her, her thought process was like, well, the fact of the matter is, it was no evidence because I literally found no evidence. So me having no evidence is evidence. Like, that doesn't make any sense. But at the same time for her, because it's like... She felt like the lawyers would have just twisted it around to be like, oh, yeah, the fact that you found nothing and then you found something, that means, like, oh, that tried to uh, take a knock against her finding evidence. But her deleting it just kind of pushed into that narrative even more, you know, in that regard. So it is. Uh, it was just kind of an interesting thing, kind of playing. Uh, that was just kind of a neat aspect. Like I said, I thought it was leaning into, into her being a perfectionist. It's like, no, 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 I found it the first time. Like, I thought that's what it was all about. It's like, no, it wasn't, so... Um, do note that I was just looking at it. There is no episode next week. There will be one on the week after next on February 4th. So do keep that in mind. But really, that's all I want to talk about in this episode. Till the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live light to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.